Montana newlywed charged with murdering her husband just after their wedding by pushing him off a cliff. We're learning more about what she was doing during the search for her missing husband when authorities say she knew full well that he was dead. ABC's Ryan Owens has the story. This morning, federal prosecutors are busy building their case against Montana newlywed Jordan Graham. They say she pushed her new husband, Cody Johnson, face first over a cliff in Glacier National Park this summer, just eight days after their first dance to this song. Now, newly released court documents show one of Graham's friends told investigators the young bride said she wanted the body found and the cops out of it. In her mind, she's believing if, they, if she can get the police out of the case, in other words, the body's found, it's determined an accident, case is closed, she's home free. Prosecutors say Graham admitted to pushing him because she regretted marrying a man she didn't love. But they say her confession came only after she concocted lie after lie to cover her tracks. Investigators say she first told them her husband disappeared after going on a joy ride with friends. These new documents include an email addressed to the new bride from someone named Tony, sent three days after Cody Johnson vanished. Cody got out of the car and went for a little hike, and they are positive he fell and he is dead, Jordan. I don't know who the guys were, but they took off. So call off the missing person report. Cody is gone for sure. Investigators say that email was part of her fraud, sent to herself from a computer registered to her own father. Now out on bail, Jordan Graham has pleaded not guilty. Next month, a jury is set to decide if Graham is a grieving widow who lied out of fear or a calculating killer whose lies finally caught up to her. For Good Morning America, Ryan Owens, ABC News. Dallas. Okay, let's get more on this with our chief legal affairs anchor, Dan Abrams. And Dan, even though she's already confessed, these documents really hurt her case. Oh, before all we knew is that she was saying that the last thing that she knew is she saw him getting into a car with some people she didn't know. That's the, that's the last thing we heard. Now to see these documents about the lengths that she went to to cover this up makes it that much more problematic for her. I mean, this note that she gets from some guy named Tony, right? And you read what she says in the note. I mean, it's so absurd, the line, call off the missing person's report, Cody is gone for sure, etc. If she's the one who created that, all to try to lead the authorities away from it, that just makes this case that much easier for the authorities. But this is still about everything that happened after the fact. The, there's still not a lot of evidence that this was premeditated. Well, look, I think that if she'd just come to the authorities from the beginning and said, look, here's what happened. We were up on the, up on the top. We'd been fighting. He'd scratched me before. He grabbed my arm. I pushed him. I don't think the authorities would have charged her with murder. I think they would have charged with manslaughter. So I will bet this is the kind of case where you will see plea discussions, where my guess is she would want something like involuntary manslaughter and almost no prison time. The authorities would be demanding voluntary manslaughter, more significant prison time. But I've got to believe they can work out some sort of plea deal. Chances are high, okay.